four new books this month. What are they? Shall we see? So the first book is Where is Mount Everest? Deepak Dalal's Ladakh Adventures. Indian Mammals. MDK's Trees, Leaves, Flowers and Seeds. Let me first introduce this book. So this book was published by DK. And this book is all about trees, leaves, flowers and seeds. It contains all the information that's very, very essential for uh, uh, young children to learn. Even for you can carry away a couple of information from this book as an adult. So this was the content. So the pictures given in this are mostly from the real plants taken by, from the real plants and it's very interesting. Uh, if you have followed me in Instagram, you would come to know that my son draw this cucumber plant for his botany lessons using this picture. And how do roots work? So how many different types of roots are there? Uh, we could even amazed by the words uh, given here that we never heard of. Uh, actually, uh, for me, I have never heard of about this. Then now we have finished what is stem and coming to this thing. Please closely note this one. Can you able to see it? I don't know. But just think. Was this a man-made bridge? No. It's a nature bridge. See? Two layers of nature bridge. Right? Can you see this? Right. In Northeast India, Meghalaya, uh, you can see this bridge. This bridge was made of fig trees. Uh, um, I mean fig trees aerial shoots they will join the fig tree one by one and they twist it around and coil it around and using a bamboo they will make a, a, a root to grow and reach the other side so that you can make this as a living bridge most of the living bridges in this world are uh, about 100 year, years uh, I mean more than 100 years old and uh, this bridge is in uh, Northeast India, Meghalaya, and it is 164 feet, I mean 50 meters long, and it is a double decker bridge, you know, you can see this, and at once 50 people can cross this bridge, right, at once, and still uh, people there are making one more layer of uh, bridge uh, by twisting all the aerial route that is coming out of this uh, uh, rubber fig tree, and they will just connect it to the other end and make it as a bridge, so this is very, very interesting. It is in Chirapunji. And now let's get into this. So how do seeds grow? Everything was given in an beautiful uh, photos. I really like this book. I'm just flip through eh, all these pages so that you can have a glimpse of it. Wow, it's a wonderful picture, isn't it? Of a sunflower. So why do plants have needles? They just want, that is the uh, thorns, right? They don't want to be eaten by all other animals. So I'm just keeping. So how is a flower? It helps in reproduction and different types of flowers. Everything looks like familiar to you. And this is very interesting, a garden of roses. Ingenious orchids, even non flowering plants are there. One among them are ferns, and these are man eating carnivorous plants. These are parasitic plants. So, where is a tree? So, I think you. So, ancient people have used uh, uh, plants different. Ancient people cultivated maize, rice, wheat, corn. So the timelines uh, in this page. And these are the plants that's growing in space. Okay. If you're still amazed, let me throw out some of the important information about the space garden. So it is in the International Space Station. Uh, if you have a close look at this. So these plants, just think how the roots, at least you know the stem will be coming out and it is against the gravity. But there is zero gravity in the space. 
yet the roots are being they are, are being attached to a woven mat so that the roots will stay anchored and the plant will grow nice in and you know what the Aeros astronauts in the space station will come and uh, what are the plants which are essential uh, for the plant to grow along with that they will add nutrients that is very much essential and along with that they will keep the carbon dioxide which they respirate out and in turn they will get the return from this plants they give out oxygen so they are improving the the space station oxygen content in the space station so i like that so this is the glossary right so next one so indian mammals right so this book was written by vivek manan and you have information that's very very interesting so let me first introduce you to the contents right introductory pages primates elephants or toad angulates even toad angulates Uh, carnivores may hairs and pickers pangolins tree shrews shrews and moles everything about this about the mammals was given here and uh, in this book they have given the uh, conservation status of each and every mammal here every carnivore and mammal everything is given here so what are mammals so the introduction was given about that and the subdivisions how the mammals were formed and many subdivisions were given evolution how how the evolutionization of mammals happened that was given in this uh, thing so you will get into the conservation status of each animal and their habitat and uh, this will give for example so that is a tree shrew which is they are just giving an introduction what places where do these animals live given with this uh, chart and how do they socially organize or the field conditions how the uh, see uh, in some of the things they have given they the pictures may appear very uh, closer but that is not the truth they were taking it from the uh, zoom lens or some other thing so the diet different mammals are there so their their diet also varies everything was given here and i like this book look so how to watch a mammal one should how one should watch a mammal and different types of see let me first so they get uh, first thing it's a primate so there is number of species in india um there are 22 primate species and the biggest primate is himalayan grey langur and smallest primate is malabar grey slender and uh, most commonly we uh, we can see was uh, rhesus monkey that is born at macock and their activity so how they are uh, during the day or during the night everything was given here and before that they will give what is a primate how do they locomote locomote and different types of primates skull okay the structure of different types of uh, primates skull was given here and also their feet how do they socially organize and what was their diet and they how do they communicate with each other and the social organization between each of them and between them and reproductive strategies there are different types of strategies and they have given the pictures of uh, how to differentiate the um, actually reproductive organs of the primates and threats and conservation and uh, local pictures they are getting very uh, uh, specific with the each species and this is the common name western uh, hula gibbon and next one is eastern hula gibbon so the place where they were found was given here you can see different types of animals were given along with their details it is very very interesting along with their uh, illustrations you can see them it's interesting